could you have predicted the, the febrile, the, the heated atmosphere in which we find ourselves at the moment? Did you see it coming? Uh, the, answer is, the, the answer is yes. Um, I saw it coming about 2010, but that's partly because I was working in one of our more radical universities. And uh, so it was, if you like, at the cutting edge of this cultural change we're experiencing. And um, the, I think the thing that surprised me most of all was I had no idea how to describe it. I knew something was happening. Uh, I knew something was happening to freedom of speech. And if freedom of speech and freedom of of thought would be going, and it was clear that cancellation was taking place. Um, and it, it seemed to me this would be confined to the universities. What surprised me was the extent to which universities had proved to be a laboratory of social control, and the way in which um, already, though I didn't know it, already a two or three generations had been trained in this new cultural relativism, and would soon be running companies. So it, it's almost as if now, I would say, there's a cutoff point. Everyone under 45 seems to have, who's been educated in, in tertiary education, uh, has been inducted into this new way of thinking. And the problem is that we don't seem to have the language to analyze it uh, in terms of what it is. And that's making it very difficult to, to discuss what's happening. Uh, so what, what is the solution? You've obviously given a deal of thought. Um... How, how do we find, and, and to some extent, I suppose, safeguard the necessary language th that would enable us to have the conversations that, that might point the way to the, to the road up and out of the morass in which we find ourselves? Well, that's, that's the $64,000 question. And the truth is, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm trying to find out. Um, and there are a few things, I, a few handholds I think I've got on the way. And the first is that, that generals... Uh, always try and fight the last war. And, and we're fighting the last war at the moment, and that's not good enough. Because what's happened is, in the last century, we had fascism and communism, both of which sought to exercise totalitarian control. And in the middle was, was liberalism. And to our huge surprise, liberalism has become totalitarian. But it, it shouldn't do, because by definition, that's what it doesn't do. But it has done. It's It's developed... Uh, it's developed ambitions for complete control. And so now we have three, if you like, three big world views, all of which have developed this ambition to control thought and behavior. So what worldview can we find that will, that will repulse it? And I think that's what we're trying to do at the moment. We're so surprised that liberalism has developed like this. We, we, we call it perhaps, you know, sometimes we say, well, it's been it's been taken over by cultural Marxism, and that would be true, but it doesn't really matter. The fact is that the, the, the one way of life that we invested our safety in has turned against us. So we're looking for a way of articulating a series of values that will protect us from this extraordinary steamroller of control. And, and for myself, I think it has to do something with Christianity because the, the the kind of oil under our feet is relativism. Uh, the moment you begin to accept relative ethical values, you begin to slip because there is no there is no gripping point where you can say I won't go any further with this. Um, so I think the I, I think that although again looking backwards, we've always thought that there's a a, a, a fight between secularism and Christianity. There shouldn't be any more. We we have to stop that fight, and we have to say to secular humanitarians. And liberals, we have to make a common cause in finding a new language and a new value system, because a steamroller that's coming at us uh, is at the moment unstoppable.